Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl here, back with another episode and back with another smartphone comparison. As we know, the new OnePlus 8, OnePlus 8 Pro just dropped the other day. We're gonna compare it to my usual daily driver, the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So we have two devices called the Pro Models. We'll see which deserves the title and of course, which one you should grab right now. We'll start off with the new contender first, the OnePlus 8 Pro. We've got the one in ultramarine blue. Absolutely love this colorway, but this is also the most expensive variant that you can grab. It's got 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, and that will set you back $999. So right underneath that $1,000 price point. So it's not exactly a cheap device. And I know that OnePlus got a ton of flack for the OnePlus 7 Pro. That was priced too expensive. And then they came back with the 7T, which was priced way better. They've made things expensive again and it's in the same ballpark as the iPhone. You can grab the 11 Pro, not the Max version, for $9.99 or if you do grab the Max, it's $100 bucks more at $10.99. And for that money, you do get quite a bit of hardware. Up front, the display, 6.78 inches, quad HD plus 120 hertz refresh rate. And that's where it blows the iPhone out of the water. It is dated, it has 60 hertz. And I know that we have the rumored iPhone 13, hopefully knock on wood coming in September. Hopefully they can complete those orders with everything going on in the world right now. But we should see that same display found in the iPad Pro, hopefully dimming down some of the bezels and reducing the size of the notch. We can only keep our fingers crossed, but this is the most dated display on a smartphone right now. Around the rest of the phone, it feels very solid and premium. We've got USB-C on the bottom, a SIM card slot tray, sadly no headphone jack, that's to be expected. I'm still a fan that OnePlus has the volume rocker and on and off button on opposite sides of the device, unlike other Android flagships. And we of course have the notification slider. This is the thing that I miss the most, switching between silent or DND. And something that always draws me back to the OnePlus is the color. It just catches your eye every time you look at it. We've got the muted ones over on the iPhone. It's unique, it's different, and this is definitely the one that I would grab. Also on the backs, next off is naturally the camera. And although the OnePlus may look like it has a triple camera setup, there are actually four lenses here. On paper, specs wise, the OnePlus destroys again the iPhone. We've got a 40 megapixel main, the 48 megapixel ultra wide. We've also got a telephoto and their new color filter sensor. That should really help with some of the unique filters that you have, but here are comparisons. Of course, the iPhone has the standard 16 megapixel sensors. I won't be too biased and I'll let you know what I think once all these photos are done. And the next important thing for smartphones has to be your battery. That's the reason why I typically get the max size for my iPhones. I have screen on time for around six and a half, seven hours a day. So I'm always on my device. I know this phone is a bit dated now. It came out last September, but I struggle to reach the end of the day on a full charge. But on the OnePlus side, we've got 45, 10 milliamps of juice, but we also have the added benefit of Warp Charge 30T. It's some of the best and quickest charging for any battery. And maybe the biggest thing, it's part of the battery coming to OnePlus devices. They can now finally charge wirelessly. They've got their own proprietary charger. Yes, they do charge 60 bucks for it, but now no one else can complain and say, oh, you can't charge a OnePlus wirelessly. I typically use a cable anyways. And the only thing now differentiating them is Android versus iOS. And this is really only a decision that you can make if you're stuck in the iOS ecosystem. I know that it's really tough to get out of. Oxygen OS over on the OnePlus, it's almost like stock Android, so it's the best that you can get. But I think because of that price point, both are around $1,000. The only factor that will help you to decide is of course iOS versus Android. Let me know what you think down below in the comments and who won that camera comparison. If you're still eyeing an iPhone, probably wait till September. We're all keeping our fingers crossed that Apple can keep up with the production. The OnePlus here just feels like a newer device. It feels like something you should get in 2020. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this comparison. And up next, I should be comparing the OnePlus against the Samsung S20 Ultra. So this is the battle between the two Android flagships right now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope to catch you in the next one. Peace.